the washing line. What is it? Why is it so effective? And what flies do you need to make it work? This is what we're going to be talking about today. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Reese, and I make fly fishing videos and tutorials that will help you catch more fish. Now if this is your first time here and you want to learn more, don't forget to press the red subscribe button and smash the bell so that you don't miss out on future tutorials. Okay, so in today's video we're going to be talking about the washing line. Now if you're not familiar with what this is, let's run through it. The washing line is a method used for still water trout, which allows you to suspend a team of flies at any depth for extended period of time. If you're not familiar with fly fishing, think of it a bit like buying a plug or lure that will swim at 100 centimeters throughout. In fly fishing, that's very difficult for us to do, largely because in fly fishing, you're thinking about the fly line you're using. That ultimately is the first point that determines what depth you fish at. So for example, if we are fishing a floating line and it's sitting high in the water, depending on what the cast is, will determine how the flies fish. So if you're fishing a floating line with no weight on the point, the flies should generally should just swim like this as you retrieve. The minute you add a weight to the fly, what's going to generally happen is the fly line is going to keep on doing this with the flies as you go throughout. Now if you think about a sinking line, that sinking line is just going to gradually sink throughout the water column and if you're moving the flies it's just going to kind of do this basically. So now we move on to the washing line. Why is it so effective? Let's put this into a real life scenario. So you and I go fishing out on a large still water, say Grafham, Cloedo, Menteith, Rutland, anywhere you want. We have a day on the lake and you catch 10 fish and I catch five. Now our casts are very similar. We're both fishing a floating line. We're both fishing 15 foot of leader with two droppers and one point fly. You're fishing two diabachs and a booby. I'm fishing the same two diabachs, but I'm also fishing a black buzzer. What's the difference? So on that day, the fish are feeding in the top four foot of water all day. That's the cruising depth. That's what you need to consider as the strike zone effectively. So what you're trying to do is keep your flies in that area for as long as possible all day. So I'm set up with the exact same cast as you, but one thing, I've got a black buzzer on the point. So how are our casts working differently? Well effectively, because you're fishing that booby on a floating line, your three flies are staying in the take zone all the time. Whereas with my cast, because I've got a black booby on the point, what's happening is the floating line is here and then the flies are coming sitting down into a depth like here. So what actually happens is I'm fishing probably more like eight foot of water, whereas you're fishing the top four foot column of water. So what does that mean? Well, on that day, you take all 10 of your fish across all three of your flies. Whereas the five fish I caught, I only caught on the first two droppers because the point fly is pulling the whole cast down. Effectively, if the fish are in the top four foot of water all day, then the black buzzer is completely out of sight and out of mind. And what it's inadvertently doing is pulling the two diowls down. So sometimes the diowls are in the top four foot, which is perfect, which is why I'm getting those takes on those flies. But sometimes the black buzz is actually pulling them out of that top four foot. Now if you consider that over a whole period of a day, let's say for example, you do 200, 250 casts during a day. That means that probably about 70 to 100 of those casts, my flies are fishing out of the strike zone, out of that top four, five foot of water. Whereas you, because you're fishing a booby, have managed to maintain that height throughout the day. And that's precisely why you've caught more fish than I have by the end of the day. So that kind of proves to you and demonstrates the effectiveness of the washing line and why you should have it in your armory and completely understand how to use it. So now that we understand what it is and we understand how effective it is, let's have a look at some real life scenarios of casts you would use tomorrow. Okay, so cast number one, we're talking the top one, two, three, four foot of water where basically it's spring, it's warm, the buzzer hatches are pushing through and you're finding fish just moiling in the surface, just taking flies in that top couple of feet of water. What's the setup? Right. Floating line, 15 foot leader, or you can extend that to be longer if you're more comfortable, but it's a good starting point to start off with. And then you're gonna go with three flies, two diabachs and a booby. The reason why we've gone for a booby over a fab is that a booby will displace more water. 
And what you'll find is when you're fishing this method, if you're chucking out a full line, for example, two long strips, if there's any fish in the area, they'll come and have a look and be inquisitive about what's happening. It's almost like a dinner bell for rainbow trout. The idea there is with a booby, you're displacing as much water as you possibly can. And with a diao bass, you're fishing in the top prime four foot of water in front of you. So that's option number one. That's a method you're going to be looking at to target fish in the top four feet of water. So let's say, for example, the fish are feeding slightly deeper down. What's the right method then? Right, we're going to change the line. So you're going to go from a floater down to a sink tip. Perfect lines would be a Rio mid tip, an airflow fast or slow tip, for example, or you could go to a slow or fast class if you really wanted. So the next set of flies is gonna look slightly different. The deeper you go, the more you'll find the cormorants will work. So we're gonna switch the method up a little bit. We're gonna put a cruncher on the top dropper, a cormorant on the middle, and a fab on the point. Now why have I switched to a fab from a booby? I tend to find for myself that I get better success when I'm fishing fabs subsurface on a sinking line than I do when I'm on a floater. So, what's the aim there? Right, okay, we're fishing a bit deeper. We can speed it up if we want. We can slow it down if we want. But the idea is, because you've got a sink tip on, if the fish aren't in that top two, three foot of water, the sink tip on the flies is gonna almost sit like this. It's gonna sit like an arc. And the idea there is, is that, let's say for example, there's a fish coming up from eight foot, and it's coming up to maybe five foot of water. It's gonna see one of your nymphs. And if it wants it, it will take it. If it doesn't want it, it might continue going up to three foot. At that point, the booby is there for it to see, and it might take the booby. The best thing about this is, if there's a big chunk of fish all day holding in that kind of three to six foot area, well, the sink tip with a big booby or big fab on the point is going to hold it right in that area where you need it to be, where the fish are sitting. Okay, so option number three. So let's say, for example, it's a heavy wind and a floater or a sink tip isn't doing enough to cut into that breeze to keep those flies where you want them. You don't want to fish a die five because it's too deep, so you go for a die three. So a die three is normally one of the most common washing line setups when you have to fish at depth. And the cast we're doing here, again, is slightly different. So we're gonna target more stocky based fish here. You can still catch your grown on fish with this method, but we're going to drop the nymph at the front and we're gonna put a small blob. So a size 12 biscuit blob or a tequila blob, anything like that basically. It's something bright to pull the fish in. After that, the middle dropper is going to be something subtle. So in the middle dropper, I'd be using something like a UV cruncher, which I'll leave a link to a description for you to see if you wanna know how to tie that. Or alternatively, you could go for a cormorant or another multi-purpose nymph. And then on the point then, I'd go with a booby or a fab. Again, the idea here is, is that with a sinking line, you're going to be down here somewhere. So the flies, when you retrieve them, are just going to go like this as you go through. Now, if you fish that cast, what's going to happen is the difference is the cast is going to be like this. And so if the fish say eight foot down, that big booby is going to keep that cruncher or that uh, cormorant and the blob in the right place for longer. It's almost slowing down the depth that those flies sink at when you need to target those fish and that is it that is the washing line it's a very simple but effective and very common method used on any large still water i mean if you went up to cluedog tomorrow or menteith tomorrow you would find one angler there who is using that method on one line and you can guarantee that they're catching lots of fish on it so if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already please consider subscribing my name's reese Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.